8.52, and if you're busy running around the house this morning, stop what you're doing and listen to this story. It is a very important one for parents. Here, also across the nation, there's a growing fear that their child will be diagnosed with autism. And while many moms and dads look for a way to avoid that fate, of course, is it possible that where you live could be a risk factor? Well, one new study seems to suggest so. Here mm -hmm. to explain what that study really means, Dr. Rakesh Mittal, a pediatrician with Palmetto General Hospital. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, sir. Uh, tell us about this study and what it suggests. Well, this is a study which was published in one of the newspapers in California, which suggests that uh, there's a high incidence of autism in certain uh, areas of, uh, of California, especially which affects children growing up in white, affluent uh, uh, societies or areas. But <clears throat> when you look at the study, uh, so when you dissect the study and go back in the history and look at the other studies published in other areas of California, just think that this is not true, kind of. Because study would suggest that uh, you have a high number of autis autistic kids born to parents who are affluent, who are highly educated, versus kids who are born to pe uh, parents who are not so affluent. But then the question is, is it that these kids are being diagnosed more because the kids who are born to affluent parents, they have more access to health care, and uh, parents who, uh, who think there's something wrong with their kid they might push it to a higher level. They keep on seeking higher and higher level of care until they get a diagnosis made for the kid's problem. Okay, doctor, I'm gonna interrupt you. When you say affluent neighborhoods, it, are you saying where you live or how much money you have, if children live in those specific areas, they're at a greater risk? Is that a true or false? It's false. False. It's false, because if suppose a kid has a problem with language or walking or talking or social interaction, those parents will seek a higher level of medical care. They might go to a pediatrician, a psychologist, a neuropsychologist. Of course, those things cost money. Right. But the other kids who are born in disadvantaged families, they may have similar problems. But A, the parents, because of different reason, may not, not recognize those problems, or they may not ha have access to a good health care. Okay. okay, doctor, so for parents watching who have young children who think that perhaps their child might be autistic, what are some symptoms that they can look for? Okay. Well, the symptoms vary according to different age group. The earliest sign would be, say, around one year of age, you know the children start babbling, mama, dada, papa. But a child who is not beginning to babble at that age, well, that's the one sign to look for. By your 16 month, most kids will start saying two words. A child who is not able to say two words by that age, that's another red flag. A child who is not socially interactive, at that age, a child will point to something, say, milk or fridge or something. But kids who are autistic, they don't have the interaction. They will not point to something. They may say ice cream or milk, but they don't have the, they don't have the ability to point to something which they need to. Dr. Mattel, thank you so much for being here. There's a lot more information. We appreciate uh, you joining us this morning. Welcome. And for more information on this study linking autism to affluence or to learn more about Palmetto General Hospital, visit southflorida.com. Click on the Go button. We'll be right back.